Welcome to part three of the Midlife Crisis series. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Neptune squaring your natal Neptune. It usually happens from ages 41 to 42. Well, it can last about three years when you go through it. And it leaves you with this question, this looming question of how do I get the life I want? How do I make this happen? It's a time of intense question of yourself, your ideals, and how well you've lived up to them. This can bring about a very painful re-examination of the beliefs that maybe up to this point you've held as sacred, or even currently hold sacred, and it could bring about a crisis of, of faith that might come up during this time. Now, some ways that this energy manifests in your life, it might be through um, disillusionment, maybe with a relationship, with a career, perhaps even somebody that you hold in high regard, like a mentor or a spiritual leader. There's something that causes you to become disillusioned with that. It might even make you feel misguided like perhaps you were um, made a victim of your own misguided beliefs or faith. It can be a time that's very sensitive. You doubt yourself. You become very apprehensive. Some during this time re just resign themselves to this is the way it is rather than recognizing what you have and what you don't have and why. The challenge with this energy is having to make changes in your life, but not understanding which ones to make because Neptune is an energy of, it can be illusion or delusion. It, it can be about the beliefs and about faith and all of that, but sometimes we just don't see clearly. I mean, on the positive, it can make you very imaginative. On the negative, very disorienting. It can leave you with a, a difficult time discerning where you're at, where you're going, how to get there. And even if it's worth it, even if it's worth trying to, to make the effort to move in the direction that you want to go. Um, it can also be difficult to discern fact from fiction and see things as they really are rather than how you want them to be. And so the advice uh, with this energy is to realize that it's healthy to uh, re-examine your beliefs in light of new information and experiences. And if you're in the middle of this energy, you probably want to put off making any major commitments because you're probably not seeing things clearly. It's just <laughs> the way it is with this transit. But you might be in a situation where delaying or avoiding a commitment or an important decision, you know, might not work well out for you later, right? It might entrap you. So you've got to, you know, in a bad situation, you might need to make a move, right? But you, even though you're not sure of yourself, you got to do something. So um, try to choose wisely during this time. Whatever choices you have to make during this transit, try to choose wisely. Maybe get second opinions from people that you trust, people that can just bring another set of lenses, see things through from a different angle. Um, but like I said, you trust their judgment. You trust for them to look out for you know what's best for you and they want the best for you. But this is a time where you have to scrutinize your lifestyle and your current situation. You have to reevaluate your career, your love life, uh, your life direction. But it, yet, as you're in the midst of this, you've got to be very cautious about making these major life decisions until the transit ends. So um, this is a good time to try to practice more, you know, acceptance and compassion for yourself until these changes can be confidently made. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, this is distracting me off camera. <laughs> and I put a video out on my channel about her. She's wild. So she thinks everything's a toy and, and it's playtime all the time until she gets tired. So my apologies. 
I want to share with you um, personally how, you know, this transit, natal Neptune, squaring Neptune, um, impacted me. Um, at, at, when, when this occurred, it was uh, from 2016 through 2017 is when I was going through a lot of self-scrutiny. Um, Neptune, my natal Neptune is in the seventh house, having to do with long-term committed partnerships such as marriage. And it was squaring uh, Neptune and Pisces in my 10th house, having to do with um, career, status, life purpose, destiny, uh, real serious stuff here, okay? These are serious houses, seventh and uh, tenth houses. So um, I mentioned to you in the previous video uh, with those opening firing shots, you know, how things uh, happened for me. Um, and, you know, with, with losing a home because I lost a job, I really had to through all this self-scrutiny, get honest with myself that there were some things that I was taught to believe, and I think most of us are taught to believe, like um, hard work pays and, you know, you go to school and you get a good job, but da 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 all this, you know, <laughs> um, and it just didn't work out that way. It did not work out that way uh, for me. Being a, a very strong uh, Christian, you know, trying to live right, that didn't quite work out as promised. <laughs> and so I realized during this time, higher education does not necessarily equal higher pay. It doesn't. And as a matter of fact, facts, right? Right, let's, let's get to facts with all this Neptunian murkiness right not seeing things clearly the facts were that i actually earned more money without a degree than i made with one i know it's crazy but it's the truth okay it, it did not make sense in my real like the way that i was programmed the way that i believed none of this made sense yet it was true and that's like by the way something you're going to deal with as you go through this transit of what you believe versus what proves to be truthful you know and that can be a very stark reality very shocking like how do i uh how do I accept this? How do I incorporate this? I, I don't like this reality. I, I like the reality that you work hard and you get rewarded for it. Um, I like the reality that, you know, I go to uh, school and I get higher pay for higher education. Like, I don't like this other reality that I worked my ass off and I don't get better status in life. And, you know, for me, like I said, this has had to do with status, career, because of the way it impacted my 10th house. Along the lines of, of Christianity, you know, we're going into the beliefs, right? Um, the reality is that all the praying and fasting in the world doesn't fix everything. It doesn't. I mean, I wish it was. Uh, trust me, God is my witness. If it would have, I mean, I don't care how crazy of a Christian people would want to call me, but um, I would will, I was willing to do whatever it took to have an easier life, you know, but the fact is, you know, praying and fasting alone doesn't make life easier. So, uh, doesn't fix everything. Shockingly, right? Some things weren't understood, you know, through, uh, I couldn't understand everything through the context of the Bible. I, you know, I had I think around 2013 started getting back into astrology again deeper into astrology and by the time this thing hit you know I had learned a lot more and I started really coming to this understanding that um, there were some things there was a limit to what I could understand through the Bible versus astrology so my belief system in spirituality changed, right? Um, I started really embracing during this time more astrology and tarot, 
Um, but then, you know, this brought this crisis of faith of, you know, where do I stand um, as a Christian? And I had to kind of bridge that gap of understanding that just because I embrace astrology or tarot does not necessarily mean that I abandon my faith in Christ and God, you know, and Holy Spirit. Um, even though others would disagree, right? There's a lot of people in the church that would totally disagree, but within myself, I had to work this out, this conflict I have within my own spiritual beliefs, um, which I think can happen with a lot of people because of this Neptune square. I mean, regardless of what house it's hitting. Um, but yeah, for me, it also, you know, with it hitting my seventh house, who am I partnering with? a lot of disillusionment about partnership and during this time i started even questioning do i do i even believe in the institution of marriage like i believed in it from a spiritual perspective but not so much legal and i really started kind of getting this shift in my thinking and my more my beliefs okay what I ended up doing out of this transit is um, launching, you know, my own YouTube channel, actually, probably six months after that transit ended, or a little under six months after that transit ended, I launched my own YouTube channel that you're watching right now. <laughs> and I work part time in the middle of the night at just a little know nothing job, because this was the crazy thing. I didn't want a, I didn't want a status -y job. I just want an entry level blue collar. I just want to be left alone. And I didn't want people, you know, prying and thinking that they owned me in my off hours. Okay. So I just wanted to be left alone. And I worked in the middle of the night at a little nothing job in the little middle of nowhere. And nobody talked to me. And I liked it like that. <laughs> I liked it like that so that I could build my business um, during the day. I realized from this time frame that being so spiritually minded made me of little earthly good. All right, back to the seventh house stuff. Uh, part of the disillusionment in my partnerships and my marriage came from seeing partners or prospective partners through this lens of who I would like them to be, which I think a lot of us do in our early 20s, just saying, but I especially did with Neptune in my seventh house. Seeing people through rose tinted glasses rather than who they are. Uh, seeing, you know, again, as, as the empath, seeing the potential of who they could be versus who they choose to be over and over again who do they choose to be okay so i i had to like take off the rose tinted glasses during this time because i was really confronted with how those rose tinted glasses had gotten me into trouble with partnerships with career with status and all of that i realized you know you can try to spiritualize love all you want and you know living off of love under a bridge, but you know, in reality, it doesn't work out too well. So, <laughs> um, and I realized during this time, you know, maybe I should be more judgmental. We hear a lot of people nowadays talk about, oh, that's judgmental. My flaw, my fatal flaw, and particularly with my natal Neptune in the seventh house, was that I just wasn't enough. I wasn't judgmental enough about who I surrounded myself with, about what I gave my time to, you know, like Facebook or long-term friends, because it was during this time that I started adding up, like I knew a bunch of people who would not show up for me. They would not show up for me. And um, they, especially in a time of need, okay, which is really like, you gotta take a long, hard look at yourself. If you know a lot of people who, you know, it, these are superficial relationships. These are not people that you can call um, in a time of crisis. But unfortunately, my way of seeing that stark sober reality and getting out of the idealization, right? Because Neptune can be idealizing things. Uh, snapping out of that idealization of, of people that I had long-term partnered with, more or less, 
I realized that these are people who really were not going to support me in going and growing in the direction that I needed to, um, particularly also with my faith. Yeah, this little cat. Oh my goodness. In the next video, we're going to have to put you away. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, she's getting super frisky. So I'm going to leave it off at that on that note. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to talk in part four about Uranus opposing natal Uranus. It usually happens around age 42 and leaves you with this feeling like, you know, you just kind of get kind of like, oh, get out of my way. There's got to be more to life than this, right? Because Uranus is about revolution, making change. It can be rebellious at times. Like, you know, I've had it. And I think that by now, if you've been watching the series and you've watched all the parts leading up to this, you understand uh, by now, you know, you're like, my God, I've had it. Get out of my way. I'm going after the life I want. And so let's talk about it in part four. Um, until then, if you want to watch the last one, part two, then you can do so at this link. Um, and when part four is available, I'll have it down here. Okay. See you in the next video.